earlier today, the SnowRunner devs dropped some crazy news and they addressed the Apache a little bit. However, I want to go over their reply to the community with you guys and I want to see in the comments if you guys kind of agree or disagree with the way they replied to it. But let's have an open discussion, let's have an open conversation about not only the Apache but the new features that are coming as well as some of the heavily anticipated features coming in Phase 2. So without any further ado, let's dive into all of it. Now, to quickly sort out one of the elephants in the room, we must talk about the fact that the ability to strap trucks down or secure them to trailers is officially coming. Now, one thing I want to touch on is that Puppy Master actually said that most trailers will be suitable for truck transportation, but within reason, and he says it obviously won't work for a truck that's bigger than the trailer at hand. And here we actually see it being used with a trailer that I don't think we've actually seen in the game yet, so that's going to be a really interesting one. And also, you notice the Canadian flag there on the right, and that signifies that this is potentially a trailer that is coming in Phase 2 with the Canadian maps and the Canadian region, of course, or the Yukon region. Now, personally, when I saw the update about being able to secure trucks to trailers, I was immediately very, very excited, and I started getting a bunch of ideas running through my head about not only all the interesting ways that we are going to be able to transport vehicles throughout the maps, but also some of the interesting ideas for roleplay missions that you create or make up yourself outside of the normal narrative of the game. However, what I was also considering is the fact that since this is being added as an official feature, we may see some missions within the game that actually are within that official narrative that involve the transportation of vehicles. Say, for example, using vehicle A with a trailer, you'll use that to transport vehicle B to location C, and that's your mission or your task or your contract or what have you. Uh, and that would actually be very interesting, especially if those vehicles had a broken axle or a blown engine or a broken drive shaft, and for some reason needed to be transported from one place to another for one of the, uh, for one of the tasks or contracts in the game. Now let's move on to talking about the Apache, the community's reception uh, of the Apache, and also the official word from the developers, and then I'm going to leave it up to you guys to form your own thoughts and opinions on what that means to you in the comment section down below, and as usual, I want to have an open conversation about this with you guys, and I would love to hear your opinions about the community's reception of the Apache, uh, or just your thoughts on it as we've moved forward now uh, a couple of days from its release. So. They've said there's been a lot of discussion about the release of our recent Classico Pack DLC and specifically the fact that it's not included in the Season Pass. We understand the frustration for those of you who bought the Season Pass and we'd like to give you more visibility about this topic and our plans for the future of post-launch support for SnowRunner. Now, they go on to say that the first important point is that we are still 100% committed to our post-launch roadmap and nothing was or will be cut from our initial plan. The last five months have seen four major updates adding Season Pass content uh, and free content for all players like Trial Maps and Map Modding. For free content, or sorry, more free content is coming with Phase 2 as well, as you'll see below. We've also worked a lot with the modding community to improve mod support and support creators through our modding reward program. Now, that's where I'm going to stop that, uh, that sort of paragraph, right? And it's interesting how they've said nothing was or will be cut from our initial plan, making me wonder if the Apache was maybe sort of a wild kind of off the wall idea where somebody was like hey we could maybe do this and you know maybe somebody at the studio was like well we can only really do that if we make it a paid dlc i'm not completely sure now moving on they say as announced before release in our season pass trailer the season pass gives you access to four phases of content we understand that we haven't given you the best visibility of the content of each phase and this is definitely something we'll work on then they go on to say to be clear the season pass contains the vast majority of post-launch content and everything that we see as core to the snowrunner experience but you can expect bonus mini collectible dlcs outside of it now i would like to touch on that for a second because previously stated they said that the season pass included everything and now they're sort of saying that it include well that it includes the vast majority but not little bonus mini collectible dlcs now i'm not necessarily criticizing them by saying that but i do want to say that we didn't really hear much about these mini collectible dlcs outside of the season pass back when the season pass was announced now granted I'm not against seeing little mini DLCs here and there throughout, but 
I'm I'm okay with it as long as it doesn't turn into every other truck, you know, becoming a paid DLC on top of the season pass. Because let's not forget, the season pass is something that, you know, you guys bought, you guys paid for, and you expect a certain amount of content with it. And I feel like any truck that is included on a season pass map better be included with the season pass. Now, if these, you know, little weird wacky trucks are few and far between, again, I'm completely okay with that. You know, if we maybe see one every few months or so, and it's kind of one of those things where it's not, you know, integral to the game experience, and so you don't have to buy it on top of the season pass if you don't want to. I think the 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 issues would arise if it became a point where you had to pay extra for something that was supposed to be integrated into the season pass already, but I don't think they're going to do that, and it doesn't appear that they're going to do that, but we will definitely be keeping our eyes out. So next, let's move on to talking about Phase 2, right? Phase 2 itself and what is going to be included with it. And now, they actually talked about some really interesting things here and hit on some interesting points. So, first off, a brand new Canadian region, two new maps the size of 4 kilometers squared, biggest map size in SnowRunner, same as Imandra, a uh, new main regional objective, building a large ore processing plant from scratch. The plant is made of three buildings. Players can build the three buildings in the order that they desire by bringing the materials to the site in in order uh, or in the order that they want as well and they've said though it's technically a winter region it won't be 100 snow like alaska it'll have a mix of mud and snow where some pl parts are flooded and some fast flowing torrents which is actually very very interesting because i remember saying something in a previous video about wishing that there was more maps where you had a variety of Parts of the map that had snow and other parts of the map that didn't have snow and some that had mud. And it seems like they're really, um, really kind of going after that feel here, which is really, really cool. And I'm really excited for that. Now, they've also said th it comes with a twist to the usual SnowRunner formula. They've said gameplay is more focused on exploration to find materials and buildings to disassemble to get materials from before bringing them to the main building site. So that's very interesting. We may have a demolition um, dynamic coming as well. Now, vehicles, they could confirm the cat forklift or the telehandler um, that we talked about a couple weeks back. They've also talked about the new cat bin truck, which is a basically going to be a giant dump truck, which is the biggest truck ever in the series, which you guys have seen, um, seen some info about prior. One new uh, Russian truck, which is most likely, most likely going to be the boar, I hope, and three new vehicle skins. They've also said that two new extreme cargos are coming. And then the phase two update that's free for all players is obviously it includes the option to secure trucks on trailers, a new fully working in-game mod browser, which is interesting. And that might mean that they're integrating, uh, integrating mod.io functionality directly into the game. So you never have to leave the game. And that also seems like another step uh, that, they, that they could be taking towards simplifying things for content console mods. They've also said new contracts in Alaska and Tamir, as well as modders will now be able to create full regions with maps tied together, which is huge. Co-op on modded maps will be supported, which is amazing. That is huge because that means all of your rock crawling maps, your racing maps will now be officially supported in multiplayer. So massive yes to that. Weather conditions will be fully synced in co-op. A lot of new settings, including the option to disable the truck driver model in cockpit view, option to set an FPS limit ranging between 30 60 and unlimited and advanced video settings on consoles they've also said we don't have a date for this massive phase two yet but we'll definitely come back to you with a full showcase of the new content and a release date soon stay tuned so all of that is absolutely massive and i cannot wait to see where they go with every last bit every last bit of the things that they've talked about here and last but certainly not least, I need to touch on console mods because that is always a huge topic of discussion. And they have said here that console mods have made great progress lately, but they are not ready to share a release date as of right now. Now, I, for one, am very excited to hear that they've made great progress. And I think the fact that they're integrating the mod functionality or sort of the mod browser functionality directly into the game could definitely point to some of the progress that has been made towards console mod functionality. Um, because... 
you would need a way to browse mods on consoles, right? Because on your, on your Xbox or your PlayStation, you're probably not gonna go into your internet browser and go to mod.io and log in and like download stuff that way. I don't think it, I just don't think it's going to work. Whereas having a mod hub essentially directly there in the game would really streamline and simplify things and move us ever closer to mods on consoles being a thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. I know we covered a lot in this video, but, um, but definitely let me know what you're most excited about out of everything that we talked about. And you console guys, I'm pretty sure you you can get excited because it seems like we will potentially be hearing more about console mods soon crossing my fingers and hoping for the best but with all that being said hope you all enjoyed and i'll see you guys later